you know, we started our online fitness business a couple weeks ago. And uh, as, as the leaders in online fitness uh, business education for a lot of years, we got to know all of the software companies inside and out. We have been working with them. I've been an advisor. I've advised basically every major software company. And so when it came time for us to build our system, you know, I wanted to, to choose the one that we were going to work with, the software program that we were going to work with. That was going to be the right combination of ease of use. Um, we're going to onboard a lot of coaches very quickly to work with our clients. You know, we brought on five at the beginning, but we wanted to build a system where we could bring on a lot of coaches. So um, very, very quickly. So it had to be really easy to use, had to have the right kind of automation, had to have the data that we uh, needed in there, had to have an Android app and an EOS app. And, uh, and so we decided to use PT Distinction. Um, and, and that's not just because you know, they were, they were the sponsors for our show. We decided to use them after looking at all the options for what we needed the best and um, really, really have been loving them so far. So I can't recommend PT Distinction enough uh, if you're looking for online training software. And normally they give a 30-day trial fee to check out the system. Um, but what they've done special for us and, and listeners to the show, so that's you, is giving you guys a 60-day trial. So basically double the trial period, really to make sure you love them. And one of the things I love about that is it's not like a coupon code. It's nothing right? Like they're putting skin in the game. Like they're basically willing to let you try out everything they have for free for 60 days, knowing that you're going to love it so that you keep using it. And that to me is a testament to just their own belief in the quality of their system. Um, and that's one of the things that I really look for. But I want to kick it to Ren for a second. Ren, um, you're one of our coaches in online trainer coaching. Yep. And, uh, and so you just started using the system what, yep. two weeks ago and got in there. So um, how are you finding it so far, man? You know, it's um, it, it's very much like uh, like a like a pair of shoes for a kid. You know, you can grow into it. What I love about it is how simple it is at the how front end. How did you end. just come up with that? Yeah, I just I, I just that made that up. The, well, that is the best <laughs> analogy that I think. Like like that analogy was so perfect it, for it was what perfect. you're talking about. And I and I know you just came up with that on the spot. I, I did, you know, amazing. but, but it is, it is, you know, you, you grow into it. So <laughs> it, it works at every level is what I'm finding out because I'm a little bit more complex as a trainer. I've been online training for a while. So I've, I've been around, I've been around the block as they say. And uh, one great thing about PT distinction is it can go from simplicity to sort of explicit detail in a mm -hmm. short amount of time. Um, if you need more detail, if you're expert at programming, PT Distinction makes sense for you. If you're new to programming, PT Distinction is great for you. He's got a great library. So I love the fact that it will, it will sort of grow along with your training business. That's one of my, what's one of my favorite things about it so far, having engaged with it for only a, a few weeks. So, you know, I, I got to say, normally I don't support your choices, Jonathan. We all know that. Uh, but in this case, I'm willing to say possibly that you didn't make an error. There you go. I mean, that's fantastic. So guys, if you're listening and you want to get going with, with that deal, with that special deal for PT Distinction, um, you can go to the show notes for this episode or just go straight to onlinetrainer.com slash PTD. And uh, you'll see there this coupon code. Just enter it in when you check out and you'll get the 60 days to check it out. Next up, I want to talk about the Online Trainer Academy for a moment. Is that cool if I deal with you guys? Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't mind. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. So the Online Trainer Academy, a lot has been happening with the quarantine. A lot has been happening with COVID. A lot of people are talking about online training, are talking about how to do online training. What they're missing, simply put, is the breadth of experience. There are some things that you simply can't learn effectively quickly. And if you're a um, instructor, if you're somebody putting together curriculums, one thing that I've learned is that it takes a lot of time because no matter how good a system or a strategy is, you've got to kind of watch that strategy go into the world and be used for like a year plus minimum in order to actually get any reliable information from it. And this is what we provide you guys with the Online Trainer Academy. This is not something that we've put together overnight. We've been around since 2013. 40 plus experts contributed to this. We had the senior course developer from Yale University do an independent audit on the learning styles of this. Just as one example, we've actually had multiple academic independent audits. Um, we've had over 30,000 people like go through this, you know, battle test it 
prove it in 87 countries. And all along the way, we've iterated on and improved upon in ways that, to be quite honest, you probably can't really even tell if you're going through it. You know, what makes a great program is not stuff that you notice. What makes a great program is comfort going through it or things that you're, you're applying, you're making use of the stuff as you're going without really even knowing just how powerful that stuff is. And then you look back at it a few years down the line and you're like, oh man, they prepared me for this. <laughs> Yeah. And so I would love it if you guys were to join us for the Online Trainer Academy. See what we're all about. I mean, we've got a guarantee. You know, if it, like we put our money where our mouth is, man, um, onlinetrainer.com slash academy. Sign up. You can get going for as little as $87 a month for 12 months. We guarantee you that you will make a minimum $1,000 with your online training business within 90 days of enrolling. It will give you your money back. Like, Test it out. Take the leap. And, uh, and, and we'd love to work with you. That's the Online Trainer Academy, onlinetrainer.com slash academy. We'd love to work with you. Using strategic partnerships to fast track business growth. Mm. That's a very official. It sounds like a real topic today. Mm. Mm. <laughs> cool. All right. Amber's, Amber's wildly unimpressed. <laughs> All right. like, um, that's just my doing, face. Are we doing the... Uh, Wow. Uh, are we doing the, the OTA ad recorded, slipped in, or am I saying something? Uh, no, both uh, OTA ad and PTD ad, they have stuff for. So unless we want to record a separate PTD ad, because we have one, and we have two OTA ones now. So I have them alternating the OTA ones. Two OTA ones? Can you send me those? Yeah, it's the, the one I, that you I'm, did with PTD, right. with the PTD one. Uh, yeah, I have no clue how good those are. So okay. um, they might not be. I made them up as we went. There was absolutely no thought or or. It sounded pretty good to me, but them. yes, I'm waiting for them to send me links to those specifically. They're not done okay. yet. Well, I'll take that as compliment. Um, we'll let this now serve as the advertisement for PTD and for OTA. And so even if they're not good, we'll just have me talking about how I don't actually know if we have the ads or not in the episode. And then we'll just get right into it. So hello, my name is Jonathan Goodman and welcome to the Online Trainer Show. Today's episode 30. 30 when? What? Incredible. What? Right? What? Don't be too excited, guys. <gasps> and we are talking about using strategic partnerships to fast track business growth. I feel like we're actually going to be presenting this in a slide deck at a professional <laughs> boardroom meeting. Look at that name. That is professional, guys. Thanks for being Don't here. Don't get used to that from us. <laughs> this is the Online Trainer Show. Trainer Show. Trainer Show. This is the Online Trainer Show. We shouldn't have a podcast. We're going to start the show. So, start the show. It's, we, we reached show 30, and now I guess we're grown-ups now. Is that how it works? We, we're adulting here. I mean, I do have a, I do have a celery stick. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I need, you know what I need? What's it called? Like ants on a log? I need like peanut yeah. butter and raisins. A little peanut butter and some raisins on there. Show, show the people how professionals do it. Uh, so you get your, I get most of my protein from dietary fat. Uh, but <laughs> well, the episode that went live today is the one where Carolina is literally eating her lunch on the episode. Oh, this is the lunch episode. <laughs> yeah, that was so amazing. About, that's the one that I was I was listening to at my workout today, um, oh, which boy. which counts now because I told the internet that I worked out today, Nerd. and uh, and Games. and that was the one that Carolina is um, is fully just. Just eat no lunch. Just, just I mean, <laughs> check out. <down>. Yeah, <laughs> that was when she. Which is out. not to be confused, Carolina's <laughs> out to lunch. <laughs> right, right. We can do that too. <laughs> we had a taste of both on on the one episode. Honestly, so so you know, I I felt like we interrupted her lunch more so than more so than she interrupted the podcast. Like, like I felt worse for her than us. Like, God, this is horrible. Like, she's got to do this podcast while it's lunchtime. She's, uh, you know, when, when quarantine hit and, and Zoom, of course, took over and everybody was like just entering in random Zoom links to try to get in other people's meetings. Yes. And people were doing like disgusting stuff, like flashing and stuff. Like, I feel like Carolina just, just ate lunch. 
<laughs> and just started going in everybody's different meeting just and just hung out there just that eating That would be my thing. That would e- definitely be my thing. In. Yeah, she eased <laughs> into our to our podcast Zoom meeting. Fully a joke thing to do, though, um, around lunchtime, knowing that anybody who's on a Zoom call is probably hungry. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody on the Zoom call is like, here's what, here's what happens for the, for the folks that don't get to, get to see exactly what goes on here. What are you this, drinking? This, right. That's that fruit punch again. Oh, it's dragon that? fruit. It's mango dragon fruit drink. It's delicious. It's, it's mango fr- dragon fruit. Okay. It's, yeah. Is that a Starbucks mango? It is. Oh, it so is. it's, it's like a hundred dollars a gallon. <laughs> it's much. like yeah. it's like a okay for anybody listening to the podcast uh and not watching this carolina was drinking this like neon purple vente takeaway cup from starbucks <laughs> that apparently is mango dragon fruit that probably has give or take 750 calories right no and, it's actually like 70 $8. but whatever <laughs> if, it, if whatever. it's from starbucks and it tastes good I already go. I go with like seven thousand grams of sugar. Yo, I'll uh, send you. I'll send you some simple syrup in the mail. It'll cost me like twenty cents. You can make one of those yourself. <laughs> no, I. You, you you teach me. You send me the stuff to make this, and I will absolutely will. <laughs> I will do it live in the podcast too. Get her. Get her IV drip for that stuff. Uh, so speaking of Zoom meetings, Jonathan, I'm I'm on I'm on the Google. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Google. Do you do you guys Google? <laughs> I thought it was just me. So I'm on the Google. <laughs> Did you ever see that show? <laughs> oh my Here we God. go. <laughs> Where they were, this guy thought this, it was, Why it was a sitcom. Why do we even try, Ren? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sitcom. And the whole joke was about Googling yourself. He's like, yo, can I borrow your computer? I got to go sit in your office and Google myself for a few minutes. <laughs> and he thought, that's, that's dirty, Jonathan, quite frankly. It's, <laughs> it's kind of. It's a kind of potty mouth that's getting What's you kicked Tim? off the oh, podcast. Tim's just over there Googling himself. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't do that. No, you should never Google yourself. So, <laughs> what was I saying, John? I think you, you've the, the great. We're going to say something about Google. So yeah. I'm on Google, and there's a story about, uh, about the Zoom on the Google, and it's a, it's a Zoom meeting, and someone who did not realize they had that camera active, mm. they, they, were, they were doing the nasty. Lucky mistake in, no. in the in the back in the background. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. The, the whole office gets gets a little taste of the. Oh uh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking the best part about that was that that was actually his plan all along because then he <laughs> turned around and emailed the entire office on their server and offered them the tape for five bucks. <laughs> so it was a Kardashian move. It was a Kardashian <laughs> move. <laughs> Skim car. To the Kardashian playbook you of business. Think about like employee rights. You can't ever fire that person. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's scary. But just just the true. stigma, just just the lasting. Uh, well, it you know, depends. we don't know how this person looked. Maybe it was a positive. Stigma. And see that I was going to follow up with that. And this this is shallow of me. And, you know, <laughs> forgive me, podcasters. I'm not really this shallow of a person, but. I think we can all admit, like, when these things happen, it's never like, it's never like a Cinemax after dark couple or anything like that. You know, like, it's, it's not like the late night cable TV couple, you know, that, that you see, like, it's never that, right? Like, it's, it's like, it's like somebody's grandpa and, you know, oh, it's just, what you know, you? it's, when, what's your late night cable TV voice? Uh, tonight on Cinemax. We've got a scintillating drama. She was a woman from the Midwest. He was a man from the city. And when they met, the opposites attracted and the sparks were electric. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in tonight for Don't Plug That In There on Cinemax. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's never, it's never like that. So... And it was about an electrician, which was the weirdest thing. Like, this was actually, it, Cinemax has now been bought by Home Improvement, net, by the Home Improvement. <laughs> and so it was one of those plumbers. home renovation shows. Yeah. It was, it's, it's the weirdest thing. I mean, that's what people do now when they stay up at night when they can't sleep. Like, they watch these home improvement shows. Oh my those gosh. I can hear the, the advertiser electrical. now. The, the Home Depot, we've got wood next on Cinemax. 100%. 
<laughs> uh, Keto, how's things going on your side of the planet? How are you doing? Aside my from friend? choking on my mango dragon on, fruit, on, on your Hulk water, <laughs> <laughs> your, your Black Panther heart shaped herb water. She's gonna be a superhero. After this. Um, oh, everything's good. Everything's peachy. <laughs> so, 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 Keto, you know, we watch your social media. Uh-huh. I can admit that. You know, Jonathan and I converse about it many times a day. <laughs> You know, I can't, I can't amount, I can't, I can't overstate the amount of times Jonathan will say, Hey, did you check Keto's Facebook today? Yeah, there's some messages. <laughs> I'm sure. You, I'm sure you, that happened. Did you, yeah. Did you see her Instagram? Um, we talk about this all day. You know, I all can barely day, get work sure. done because of it. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I saw that you had a, you had a really nice dinner. Like yes. that, the, the food looked amazing uh, yes. at, at this dinner. Um, and I'm really, I really do stalk your Facebook and Instagram for information. I can admit that. <laughs> I'm not too big to admit that. Uh, it's only because your life seems so much more interesting than mine. You know? I mean, I, really, you know, sure, I'm doing the OTC thing and that's fun and all well and good. But, but, you know, when I try to figure out how can I break out of the shell, like how, how, can, I, how can I put more Ren? I need more energy. You know, I look Renergy. to you. Oh, that's a thing now. Yeah, that's that's definitely a thing now. I oh need my more goodness, energy, that is and a I look, thing. You're my energy muse, Keto. Hey, oh you know, one right. one week you're in the. I think you said the Adirondacks or the at a at a. Is that Gong Quinn. Yeah, that's same thing. Right. And then the n- next week you're having these fabulous dinners. I mean, <laughs> you you did three podcasts <laughs> here with us in a bathing suit. You know, off, <laughs> off the shore of the water. You know. Sipping, you got your Hulk juice and your full course meals during the <laughs> during the podcast, and and Living so I look to you for for lifestyle muse. So you know, can you share with us a little? You know, what's your week, week been like so far? It's been two days since we talked. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna laugh because actually, not last night, but the night before, um, we, we actually we spent it at uh, Jeff's family's cottage. So yeah, so yeah. I was up at the cottage again, like just middle of that's the week. Gross. It was like, oh, you want to go for an overnight? Sure, like why not? So that that sounds pretty funny. But that that's surprised. the freedom that comes from working online. That's all I, I have to say. Segway. Yeah, segway. like that's all because either we need a like if button. I can we get a segue? We button? do. We do need a bell or a button or something yes. for segue. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm sorry. We we got excited and we. Ended interrupted your story keto i'm sorry oh no it's just that like if i wasn't with jeff this could put you know it would be with my friends or you know with my neighbors that i hang out with or whatever like i would still be able to do these things because i work online so Which that's beautiful i mean you just happen to be with the mayor i just uh, yeah i'm but, fortunate in that <laughs> that comes right. with some perks when for you sure. first <laughs> told me about that relationship i mean this is a long time ago now well before mm-hmm. this podcast existed. Yeah. When you first told me about that relationship, yeah, it made my heart smile so much. Not because oh, I was nice. happy for you in any way. <laughs> I guess you were not. Empathy and emotions are not general. I knew. It wasn't, it wasn't that. I knew just how many jokes were to come. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, my... my my heart, my heart was happy, and my heart is even wow, more happy. Oh wow, Vin- guys! Vintage. And if that, I mean, uh, hashtag friendship goals right there. I mean, <laughs> there if go. that's not it, I don't know what. This is it. <laughs> vintage Jonathan Goodman, you know, friend to friend. You know, when I, heard I about his find, relationship, we should find the original. Uh, I think it was like a Facebook Messenger conversation <laughs> where you where you told me that you guys were together, <laughs> and then it you was, met him. I was just like, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, no. God. <laughs> Does he so not know into you. what he's getting into? <laughs> I was so happy for you because I knew that I could exploit this relationship for personal jokes. Ex- that's exactly it. Lo- that's exactly love you, it. John. You are welcome um, for the material. Very, that I very can nice, John. That's, right. like that's like the toe touch. It's like, love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we, we actually do have, a, a, we have some subject matter today. Yes. Uh, this one's going to be a snooze fest for me again because I've never done it. So I'm just going to check out <laughs> for about 20, what, 20 minutes um, while Jonathan talks about this topic. But partnership is something that, can I, can I be honest? Is this a I, safe place? I'm, yes. I'm frightened of it. You know, I'm, I'm frightened of it. I, I think I may be leveraging somewhat of a, a partnership between, you know, myself and Jonathan and Keto and, and Amber in the context of this podcast, perhaps. I don't think I'm leveraging very much, but, you know, I'm frightened of it. You know, put me at ease, Jonathan. I, I, I need to be, I need you to rock the baby to sleep. Um, 
literally and figuratively here. If uh, you knew anything about my first two and a half years of fatherhood, <laughs> you would know that I have no idea <laughs> how to get a baby to sleep. None. Calvin, legit for like a year, <laughs> we had to tap Calvin's back as he went to sleep. Really? Like pretty hard. I was like, this is probably hurting this kid, right? And then, and then we, would, we would slow it down as he started to, to start to fall asleep. <laughs> and don't you to dare stop too early. 100%. I had, to, I had to reinforce my arm because my, my shoulder <laughs> started getting tired. I had done my rotator cuff. I was doing this so much. And, and, and it was like a slow, slow, slow. And then he'd start to stir a little bit. You're like, no, 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 no. And then you're just like, keep, keep <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> and then, and then, and then finally just like a, like a, pull the arm away as he's finally sleeping and sneak out of the room and just ice my shoulder before I go And it's back. like the ninja roll on the floor and like, you oh know, you're crawling, army crawling out of the room. Yeah, I have no idea. There. I mean, <laughs> Calvin, so Calvin's birthday is May and he turned three in May. And I mean, he really only started to sleep. There were random nights where he slept consistently, but he really only just started to sleep throughout the night, like late, late, late into a second year. Um, and a lot of that was because we traveled so much, you know, he lived in so many different places, but right. um, I have no idea how to put people to sleep. <laughs> well, I got to no, say, it was you're more skills talented are exquisite than you know. on this podcast because I doze <laughs> off every time. It's, it's yeah. amazing how good I feel now and how much I forgot what that feeling felt like. Oh, yeah. For, like the first two years of his life. Yeah. It's um, awful. Now you're that, a walking zombie. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we can go to bed and be like, I know I'm going to sleep through it the night, like whatever, wake up to pee once or twice, but like sleep right. through it the night, right? I'm thank getting you. old, so I have to pee through it the night. Um, so <laughs> thank, thank you for that, Jonathan. Partnerships. I mean, it's funny, actually, when you, I, I want to give a couple really interesting examples of strategic partnerships that have been really fruitful for, for online training academy students. Um, and I have, I want to talk about Bob, Scott, and Frank, who all sound like made up names, but they're not. They're actually real people. <laughs> <laughs> um, sound is so made up. I know. It's like, I'm talking about Bob and Jim and um, Bob the second. You know when you try to like make up names for something and for some reason it's so unbelievably hard to do? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to talk about Bob and Scott and Frank who are not made up names. Um, but, but your idea of teams is interesting, you know, talking about, um, talking about this podcast when, and like how this is kind of a partnership. I've never actually thought about it that way, um, but it is like whenever I guess you form a, a team, it is really a partnership. And one of the most important things with the partnership is that you're not too similar as the other person. And one of the biggest places where people fall flat in partnerships is you want to work and partner with people that you like being around and you often like being around people who are like you. Right. And as a result, then you don't complement each other very well. You, you simply have two people doing the work that one person should do and then nobody doing the rest of the work. And, uh, and you know, when I was thinking about putting together this podcast, it's, it's, it's definitely evolving and that's one of the cool things about it. But it was, it was absolutely like, I kind of know what I'm going to bring to the table. I'm going to put people to sleep you know, talking about online training, <laughs> but what were the people that we, I wanted to surround with, like, as we're building up this team, as we're building up partnership. And I had specific characters. I had a, a specific idea of the type of feel and the personalities that were needed for that feel. And then the operational support that we would need on the back end of it. I mean, I couldn't bring a lot of podcasts are really boring because you have like two people who try to be the straight up subject matter experts. Right. Like yeah. it's perfectly fine for everybody to contribute. And, and if you've listened to the first 29 episodes, like like 100 percent, everybody in this podcast very much contributes. But you will also recognize that we all kind of have our roles. Right. And. And we're starting to kind of figure out and go deeper and deeper into those roles and into those characters. And it's not that we're not acting like we are. We're being very true to who we are, but we kind of play it up. Oh, yeah, for, for this. sure. Because, I mean, it's just fun. It's just fun to, it's fun yeah, to play. Yeah, Ren is not and, as funny in real life. No, not Ren is all. probably funnier in real life. <laughs> um, Ren plays it down. Uh, we, we, we play it up. So that's actually a really good point that I wasn't planning on talking about. I made a point. And, 
with, <laughs> I, I, made a point. I did a thing, guys. Uh, I think it's a really good point that you brought up about partnerships. And it's not so much about strategic partnerships to like get your clients and build your business, although it could be. You know, as you're building up your business, as you're building out your team of people to support you, the biggest mistake that so many people fall into, and I fall into this, like, man, I can tell you stories of how I've fallen into this trap, is you like people, so you want to work with them. Mm -hmm. Without recognizing, okay, this person brings something to the table that I don't. And what you will often find as you start to grow as well is... In a lot of cases, it's not a financial transaction. In fact, I found that the most fruitful partnerships we have, finances are certainly involved, but largely irrelevant. Because you're providing, I mean, anybody who can kind of move the needle for you in any meaningful way, um, in terms of like 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 a strategic business growth partnership, is somebody who can probably make money themselves. They don't really need you for that, right? But there's something that they can't do mm-hmm. that, that you can then provide for them. I mean, the most common strategic partnership with online trainers is uh, basically like, influ- call it influencer type partnerships. And I'll, I'll give you two really good examples of this. Um, there's, there's actually two kinds of it, and I'll give you two examples of the first one and, and one example of the second one. So, um, Bob, uh, here's my international story. I met Bob. I, I was living on an island called Copenhagen in the south of Thailand. <laughs> and um, we actually lived there twice. We lived in a cave. Um, oh, God. Messed up. Did we you, had like bats flying in cave? at night. Yeah, we lived in a legit cave for, for three months. We slept, Allison and I, this is how we knew that we loved each other. Um, Allison and I slept on a single gym mat in a cave. What? We both caught fungal infections. I got bitten by a centipede in the middle of the night, almost need to go to the hospital. What? Uh. Uh, bats flew in at night, cats ran in at night. I don't even know what kind of bugs there were on the, on the shower and stuff like that. There were um, frogs and stuff on it. Anyway, and so we were living- And you shade at me for like mice and squirrels in my house. I'm just going to leave that there, all right? You sit with that. Sit with what you just said, sir. I'm talking about a cave in Thailand. <laughs> this is your house in Canada. <laughs> like <Thank> goodness <laughs> yeah thank you thank you Roberts. yes i throw shade appropriately so so i posted a picture that we were living on this island in thailand on instagram and bob messaged me and he's like yo i'm living on the same island <laughs> what? What? Um, so bob and his and his beautiful wife and daughter we got to know pretty well because we were we were there for a few months and um and so he's a german fitness professional uh, who is doing online training, little bot OTA and stuff like that. But, uh, but they were, they were traveling around and living the nomadic life. I don't actually know where they are now. They're, they're still doing the nomadic thing. And what he did, so he bought OTA like, like a year or so after we hung out and stuff like that. And, um, he basically found a influencer and I'm not talking like an influencer, influencer, like somebody with a, somebody with a following in a very targeted very direct niche. So this was like a, um, I think it was a German musician in this Mm -hmm. case and literally like liked her music, messaged her and just said, Hey, I'm a fitness professional. I'd love to train you for free. If you get good results, is there any way, you know, and if you feel like sharing the results afterwards um, on your social media, you know, I'd love that. She said, yes, filled his clientele. Right. He, he trained her. He got her great results. She, of course, was sharing the entire process. Oh, wonderful. Filled his entire clientele. Right. Wow. Um, and you can do this with a lot of people and they don't need to be like big influencers. Scott Bisbee, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys saw this in, uh, in the group a couple of days ago. Scott is uh, coach at West in Canada. And I think it was a radio host. Amber, you're nodding your head. You saw it. I think it was a, a radio host, wasn't it? As you unmute yourself. I think she's looking it up. Yeah, so, I'm going to double check. 
Yeah. So uh, we don't want to get the facts of the story wrong, but but basically, this person, I guess, he was listening to the radio, and the and the radio jockey, the disc jockey, was talking about uh, fitness and how it was it was hard for people to work out, and he he just messaged it like randomly out of nowhere, and mm-hmm. was just like, "Hey, I'm in Alberta. I'm an online coach. Um, I'd love to work with you." And of course, now this radio host on like the radios, Facebook and everything like that is posting mm-hmm. their workouts is talking mm-hmm. about how they're working together and how great he is and tagging him and linking him and stuff like that. And I mean, I don't know actually if he's gotten any clients or anything from him. He's certainly gotten a tremendous amount of, of coverage and reach mm-hmm. and his networks and everything has come from it. I just haven't spoken to him. So I don't know whether he's got clients from it or not, but it really is that simple. Um, and it's not necessarily people who are like famous right Mm -hmm. um and they might not respond to you know the first person you reach out to might not respond to that but some will and it's a great way to cut your chops at this thing the second um this is frank benedetto who's in our um, level two of the online trainer academy he's actually in our legacy he's gone through the program and he's still working with us because he's had such great success he um his specialty is fighters and so he has a fantastic program it, it's it's actually there's a there's a lot of things that i love about frank i mean i love frank he's an awesome guy but there's a lot of things i love about his business number one is we spoke about this on a previous episode this big misconception around fitness professionals that you have to make the majority of your money from the people that you train you know mm-hmm. a lot of fit pros are really selfless and really want to help people who may not have a ton of money Right. And they think that they need to have their whole career and they're like, okay, well, I'm not making enough and I'm working too hard. Well, one of the things that we did with Frank was identify that with him because of course his bread and butter is preparing fighters for fights physically. Mm-hmm. So he'll get a fighter that will come in eight, 10 max, 12 weeks out and have booked a fight. And I mean, I, I didn't know a ton about fighting, but I probably could have guessed this, but like fighters don't make anything. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know, like the top MMA fighters do, Mm -hmm. but you get like 10 down from the top. I mean, these guys can hardly even pay their bills. And so, yeah, booked a fight, but they don't really have much money to pay Frank, certainly not premium prices or anything like that. And so what Frank did is basically built a program that is really, really scalable for the fighters, has built his brand around fighters, And then what we also recognized is, hey, there's a lot of people who do have a lot of money, who love fighting, who are not fighters, but want to train like a fighter. Mm. You're talking about investment bankers, for example, those types of guys and girls, right? Where they, they love fighting and they want to train that way. So what did he do? So he created a train like a fighter program that's a higher end few thousand dollars for 12 weeks. His, he doesn't even really promote that, right? He promotes him as an expert in fighters and then people who will come in that are non-fighters. He works that. So I love that about Frank. But um, in his community, he's rightfully so gained a really, really good reputation. And so there's, there's basically an influencer in his community who just doesn't want anything to do with online coaching. So this is somebody who has a big brand in the fighter community who wants nothing to do with online coaching. Who basically him and Frank partnered up and he just said to Frank, he's like, I don't even need much money for it. Like, I just want to know that these people are well taken care of. I have all these people asking me for coaching. So Frank is now stepping in and coaching this influencer's people, kicking back a bit of money, but more than anything, this influencer just wants his community to be taken care of. So that's the type of thing that happens when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. You know, can you go and, and manufacture that? Maybe, maybe not. But if you are in the right communities, if you get to know the right people and you build enough of a reputation, that stuff absolutely happens. Um, those are some really, really basic ones. I mean, you could talk about like big business partnerships and stuff as well, which we do a lot with the personal trainer development center, but um, in terms of influencers, I mean, those are the first one particularly is something that every single person listening to this right now, like you got time to take on one or two more clients. Mm-hmm. 
that are select influencers. I mean, I'm not a huge proponent of training people for free, but if you could train one person for free, that's going to fill your entire clientele by just posting about their progress. Yeah. It seems to be a pretty good deal to me. Yeah, absolutely. That, 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 that sounds solid. Uh, Amber, did you, did you find out the story? Is that, was that what happened? Yeah. The, uh, a radio guy from a country music radio station. Oh, country. I was country when country but, wasn't cool. So, so country music disc jockey from Western <laughs> Canada. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I don't know about you. I think country music is pretty bad too. There's a lot of people who like it and the people who yeah. like country music. Amber. Oh <laughs> man, they like country music. They love it. They love it. <laughs> oh man, do they love country music. I like I like the lyrics of country music. Malcolm Gladwell did a did a, I think it was a two-part series on his podcast Revolutionary Revolutionist History about country music and the lyrics about it and I started looking into it more. I mean, it's they're all about heartbreak. I mean, it's just like really beautiful lyrics and stories, but also sometimes just like really, really sad too. But yeah, um, yeah, it's good. It's it's good. What we call in the South drinking music, Jonathan. <laughs> you know, you need in the southeast, south southern United States. You need some good drinking. Yeah. Put on some drinking music, buddy. Uh, <laughs> and, that's, and that's that's what you do. You know. It, but it's really interesting, you know, you bring up a good point because we are in we are in an influencer society right now, right? But you're not talking about influencers, you're talking about people who actually have influence uh, yeah. and working through that. Because some influencers, you know, they're selling their detox tea or what what have you. That that's not it. They, you know, they don't really have they don't resonate necessarily with a particular audience, but if you can find someone who resonates with a particular audience, people love their disc jockeys. We know that. Um, people love their musicians, their actors, or the local people in their community that are that are actors. They do the stage plays, mm -hmm. you know, in your city and stuff like. There's there's a lot of levels of actual influence, right? You know, to, to I love that. I love that that you just called that out the lack of actual influence that so many influencers have right. mm -hmm. is actually really funny. And it's definitely not a numbers game. Right. And, and, you know, I wonder, this is not something that I'm saying for certain. I don't actually know whether it's true or not, but I wonder if the key to finding people who actually have influencers is, is going really, really deep with niches like Western country music disc jockeys. Um, right. And the numbers are going to be way smaller, but there's also going to be way less, you know, calls on their time, competition, whatever. But the people who follow them like really care. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. No, I like that. Because, and I don't, I don't know, I'll be transparent about, you know, being a coach in OTA level one and, and, you know, and I'm going to defer to just like to do, defer to Kettle, um, especially since I pronounce her name so well after 30 episodes now. <laughs> you hear the Kettle? Kettle? That's good, right? Totally natural. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it's, it's like we were born in yeah, the same like you're Mexican. city. I'm, ba I'm basically, I can't tell this apart except for my hat, <laughs> but I digress, you know, I see people in, in OTA coaching all the time who have 15,000, 20,000, 30,000 Instagram followers. And they, and you know what they'll say to me? I really need help getting clients. You know, I'm just, I'm, I just find it's really, really challenging to get clients. And that's really the difference between um, engagement and following, right? Like mm -hmm. we get so fixated on the following. The engagement is where the, where the bang for the buck is, you know, Kero, do, do you see similar things happening in your sphere of the internet? So my best example of having had like this kind of experience with somebody who is very influential mm -hmm. is a, a local woman who has been my client 
for at least the past five years. And mm -hmm. this woman, she's a freaking firecracker. She's one of those. She's the president of all the committees. She's the head of the mm -hmm. Rotary Club. She knows everyone. She That's a freaking influencer. She knows everyone. Everybody owes her favors. Everybody listens to her advice. And when she's happy with some, with something, she's the kind to go and yell it from the rooftops. So I have an actual flow chart of like the thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> of dollars that I have made from knowing her alone. Just the people she has referred to me, the people that have signed up to my boot camps, to my one year program, to my online coaching, to my personal training, you name it, she's brought them to me. Why? Because that's the kind of person that she is. So again, this is not somebody on Instagram. This isn't a stranger. This is a very real person in my community who just happened, like our personalities totally meshed. We have a lot in common. And so she was very comfortable with me. And as long as you have that kind of connection with a person, like why not? That can be you as well. Yeah. So, so the deep dive works there. I think, I think it's a very interesting point that you, that you brought up, Jonathan, you know, about, I mean, if the USP works for an online coach, why wouldn't it work for an online influencer? I'm thinking, you know, if you, if you niche oh. down a little bit, who, seems are, the, to make who sense. are the other very, inf I mean, this is what we talk about in the online trainer Academy, isn't it? Yeah. Who are the other really influential people that are as dialed down as you already are? Um, the, the, the heuristic that I really love to follow that I think is getting more and more important every day is if this is you, then this is for you. Right. And it's that idea of it's so hard for everybody, myself included, to figure out what the heck to listen to, who to pay attention to, regardless of like trying to figure out how to make a good decision. Like I first need to figure out what information I need to even take in. Right. That is that allows me to measure, you know, where I'm going to make that decision. That was a terrible way of saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> it made no, it made no sense. Just ignore that last little bit. That'll be, that'll be the call out, the, the code for Instagram. It's like, <laughs> right. Right. That was, that was, just, that was, that was a bad way of saying that. This idea of like, before I even figure out what I need to figure out, I need to narrow down my choices. I, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's the hard part these days. And so how do we even do that? Right. And that's why I think um, as a marketer or as anybody putting out information, you have to kind of follow this heuristic. If this is you, then this is for you. Whatever you do needs to be for somebody and not for somebody else. I'm not the first person to say that, but I think that that gets more and more and more and more important every yeah. single day. And so when you are figuring out your communities, think about what we did. So a couple months ago, maybe two months ago, we experimented with something at the PTDC based around this theory. We called it Mother's Week. Mm -hmm. And that was fantastic. It was, it, it was, it was, it was a, it was a cool little thing that we did. It was basically a week, you know, parts of it were executed well, other parts of it could have been executed better, but it was basically a week where we celebrated trainers who worked with, mothers who work with postnatal women. And one of the things that we decided to do is like, instead of the PTDC being for all trainers all the time, what if we thought, what if we choose a week where the entire platform is catering towards one specific part of our population? Because what that allows us to do is create a couple really key pieces of content. It allows us to celebrate other people who are already serving that audience. Mm -hmm. in a really, really powerful way, support them, bring them up. But also guess what? When you support other people and make them a part of what you do, what do you think they do? Well, they show you to their audience. So we created like a follow Friday on Instagram, right? We created um, roundup articles on the PTDC where we did our research and we basically said, who are the people who we consider to be leaders in this field already for this population? Okay. Well, let's call them and see if they want to be a part of the article that we're doing and get them involved in it. Let's celebrate their social media accounts. It's all that. And what do you think happened? Well, our numbers jumped that week because immediately now 
all of these other people who have no reason not to promote us on any given time, but never would have otherwise, right. now have a specific reason to promote us at a very specific time. That's the, that's the key. Um, that's what I think you need to do these days is you've got to go in deep. And it doesn't mean that you only do that. You could pick a period of time where you go in deep. Let's say you have two or three audiences that you want to work with, right? Mm -hmm. You could go in deep with one of them for one month, with another one for another month. Like we could do Mother's Week for one month. We could do um, uh, vegan fitness for another month. We could do uh, uh, celebrate men and women uh, in the military who are involved in the fitness industry another week, you know, like mm -hmm. we could do all these things. Um, and so uh, that's, that's the key to these partnerships is you got to be a little bit proactive. There's so little real proactive work, which is why I love the story of Bob, which is why I love the story of Scott, because they basically said, okay, well, we're going to make that first call. Mm -hmm. Mm. Very few people make that first call. I'm getting together with three guys tonight. Four guys actually. One just messaged me on the podcast because I was checking my messages when you guys were talking. And, <laughs> and I'm getting together with four guys tonight and I'm introducing them to each other. And they're all fantastic people in our industry. We all live within 15 minutes of each other. None of them know each other. A mixture of journalists and business development people from, from various companies. And the only reason why we're getting together is because I was like, hey, Thursday night, my family's, or, or Allison and Calvin are, are visiting a friend and they're not home for dinner. Let's get together, guys. Just because I made that call. Yeah. But you, but you gotta make that call. Yeah. You gotta be the one to make call. that call if you wanna make things happen. I want to remind you, Jonathan, one of the pivotal moments in my career was uh, the time that out of, you know, wanting to be like that connection piece. Remember the first time that you had like the OTA affiliates program and I developed kind of like this program between you and PN with their pro coach mm -hmm. uh, coaches. And so that worked great. And like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, yes, make the first call. And don't sell yourself short because even though they're two large companies with awesome people doing awesome things, you can still have a vision that hasn't yet been explored by either one of the sides. And you can just be the person to bring attention like, hey, these guys have this thing that your guys are missing. How can we make this work? And then amazing. Like suddenly next thing you know, you're doing awesome work with each one of the companies because you took that step. So yeah, there. Be bold. Go try. Awesome. Cool. I guess you guys already heard the train. Uh, I tried to mute it. But, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I, I remember that, Keto. I, re, I remember thinking, who is this lady? You know, <laughs> she, you know I'm, I'm in both groups. Obviously, I was in, you know, I, I got the context from both sides of it. And I was like, okay, wrap it up. Amber said wrap it uh, up. But, but I was like, who is this lady that, you know, your, your, the post, the thread just kept rolling. You're like, you got another person and another person and another person. And, you know, cause they were documenting for us in the thread who was doing what at that time. And I was like, yes. who is it like? And the numbers were like, whoever was second to you was, it was so far back that it was <laughs> ridiculous. Was like she had 75,000 next person had like three. Um, <laughs> but, but good, good information to Jonathan today about partnerships. I got I to gotta go to, I got an OTA call. Um, you know, so if you're listening out there, guys, you know, explore some of those partnerships. There are influencers that are, are within your grasp and within your, your, your sort of sphere of influence. Uh, and, and to Keto's point, even if you feel like they're outside of your sphere of influence, you could be the first person who actually connects the dots for them. So don't be intimidated by that. And, you know, we're 30 now, so we're a big deal. We're grown ups. You can't tell us what to do. Um, <laughs> but you can come back here and listen. I mean, we have full autonomy now. Like, we're 30 years old. It's, 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 um, so, you know, please go over and check out the show notes, uh, onlinetrainer.com slash podcast, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds right. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and leave us a review, guys. You know, leave us a review. Give us a ranking. Uh, and we'll see you on 31, man. Special 31. Uh, Great job today, guys. Just magnificent podcast. <laughs> Can I see that on the air? Uh, just yeah. magnificent. 
Um, we give each other a high five, I think. Bye. Yeah. See you later. I think it's important to celebrate one's successes. <laughs> this is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>